Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today was the big day, the second Apple event of the Tech-tober, Tech-tember stretch of time, the Tech-tember to remember. Let's talk about Final Cut Pro 10.6. I will say that there's a few videos out there already that hit YouTube that do a great job of going in depth with what Final Cut Pro 10.6 offers, namely Ripple training, which I'm pretty sure Steve and Mark get Final Cut Pro updates way ahead of time because they put together an awesome video that was super in-depth with what the updates were and how to use them. Basically a, a, a tutorial on how to use the new object tracker and uh, I'm kind of jealous. I wish that I could get the update uh, well in advance so I could have my video out the day of the Apple event. And then Dylan over at the Final Cut Bro, he did a really great job of going into the object tracker as well. So you'll want to check that out. I'll have that link down in the description below. So let's check out the release notes and look at what we've got. The big things are we now have an object tracker in Final Cut Pro and I know a lot of you non-Final Cut Cut Pro creators and professionals are going object tracker. You just getting that now. Final Cut, we've had that stuff for years. I agree. It's been a, a long overdue enhancement to Final Cut Pro and we finally have it. And, and I will say that based on the videos that I've seen, the thing that I really like about it is that Apple, I feel like has really simplified and made it intuitive with how to use it. Everything from just dragging any kind of title over onto the viewer window to have that title tracked to the object that you want to track it to really makes it simple. I've used some motion trackers from places like Cormelt and they have been really difficult to use. They get the job done, but they just were not very simple for me. And again, I am a creator that is a little bit more on the creative side versus the technician side. So any type of obstacles that I face with things that are a little bit more technical versus intuitive and creative, I really struggle with. So I'm excited to try the object tracker. I haven't used it yet but I did watch Ripple Training's video and really loved everything that I saw in their demo of the object tracker. So how does object tracking help me? I don't do a lot of text animations that track objects or track with objects, and maybe I will a bit more now that it's easier to use and built into Final Cut Pro. The things that I use tracking for most, two things, blurring or pixelating out like a license plate on a moving vehicle like my own. I always want to blur out my address, and this makes it much easier to do that. Before I was doing it frame by frame with keyframes. And even if the shot was only three seconds long, you know, it took a couple of minutes, sometimes five plus minutes to track it if it was a complex movement of whatever the object was in the frame. And although I could get it done, and it was halfway decent and I really didn't care that it looked perfect because I was just blurring out a license plate. It, it took a lot of time, it was a pain. Now with the object tracking, I can do that much quicker. The next thing that I hope to use it for is tracking masks and color grading. Now, I don't do a lot of super intensive color grading, but every once in a while, I wanna have a color mask track with my face. Maybe I, on the outside of that mask, wanna have a little bit more of the shadows pulled down a little bit more darker, kind of a custom vignette, but I really want there to be a subtle tracking with my face to keep my face from going into areas where it's a little bit darker for that mask. So that's something that I'm really excited about as well. And I think those are two really exciting uses for the object tracker. A lot of you may have seen my most recent video about the iPhone 13 Pro Max and cinematic mode. I was out at a racetrack filming Ferraris and Lamborghinis and really giving cinematic mode a run for its money. I really was happy with it, but when I went to edit that video, I couldn't edit any of the focus points or change the depth of field. Now with this upgrade to Final Cut Pro, we can make all those adjustments to our footage that was shot in cinematic mode. So that's really exciting, and I'm excited to mess around with that footage that I have and see how all that works. Again, Ripple Training does a great job going more in depth on how you can edit focus points and depth of field in Final Cut Pro 10.6 definitely check out their video. So the last big upgrade to Final Cut Pro 10.6 is under the hood performance. Apple released the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with the new M1 Max and M1 Pro chips. So Final Cut and Metal and all of that stuff under the hood is going to get even faster with ProRes decoding and encoding, H.264 coding and encoding, and HEVC encoding and decoding. So look for some serious performance bumps to, I hope, existing M1 chips and then the new M1 chips as well. Those are updates that you're not gonna see in the user interface. There's not gonna be new buttons or new keyboard commands, nothing like that. 
It's all stuff that's under the hood, but you're gonna see some serious performance increases with Final Cut Pro on M1 computers. And looking over the release notes, there's a couple other little things. The new neon effect is a new text effect. I've used some different glow effects from third parties to make text have a little bit of a glow to it. So I'm excited to try out this new neon effect and see what it does to text and graphics. You can see here on this line in the release notes that Final Cut updated its XML version to 1.10 from 1.9. This doesn't really affect most people using Final Cut Pro, especially my audience who are predominantly creators on YouTube and TikTok and other social media. Who this does affect is the more professional users who are kicking out XMLs for maybe audio and of course for color grading in DaVinci Resolve. When Final Cut updates the XML version, you really wanna make sure that other software manufacturers have upgraded their software to be compatible with that XML version. What's nice in Final Cut is you can choose to export a 1.9 version if some of the other software isn't up to date yet, but you really wanna be careful that you don't kick out 1.10s and somebody who's color grading for you in DaVinci Resolve can't open that XML because DaVinci hasn't been updated yet. So be mindful of that. So one important thing to keep in mind before you update to Final Cut Pro 10.6, if you look at the release notes page here, Apple at the very top says, make sure that you back up your current version of the Final Cut Pro application and your Final Cut Pro libraries. If you go back to my videos about the 10.5.3 and 10.5.4 Final Cut Pro updates, you'll see where I talk talk about how to back up Final Cut Pro and your Final Cut Pro libraries. I'll link to those videos in the description below. You'll wanna check out that process. Apple also has a support article here that talks about how to do that, backing up your libraries and backing up the Final Cut Pro application. You definitely wanna do that before you update because if you do update and you haven't backed up Final Cut Pro and some project you're working on or third-party plugins or whatever it is aren't working, you can't just go re-download 10.5.4. You're really gonna be in a bind. So make sure you back up Final Cut Pro before you update to 10.6. Same thing with your libraries. This update requires a library update. You can see here, if I open up a library, and we'll go with my latest video, it's gonna trigger an update to that library. If you don't back up that library, duplicate it in its same location, and then do the update, you can't go back to 10.5.4 with that library. It's stuck in only 10.6 compatibility. So make sure that you duplicate those libraries before you do this upgrade. So the last thing I wanna talk about is just expectations and what all of us in the Final Cut Pro community come to expect when we get to this time of the year this September, October stretch where Apple is gonna be releasing new software and new hardware. And typically Final Cut Pro updates come along with that. I will say that although it's really great to have the object tracking and it's cool to have the cinematic mode editing tools in Final Cut Pro, it is a little bit underwhelming uh, to have this 10.6 update only have those two big feature enhancements. They have done an amazing job with Final Cut Pro and I'm really happy with the application. It does everything I need it to do for creating my YouTube content, but there are definitely some things that are missing, I think, that would enhance a little bit more of the high-end workflows that I'm interested in. I know a lot of you out there have really wanted some very basic feature enhancements and then some more elaborate ones like having faders and more sound mixing controls like you might see in some competing software like Adobe Audition and whatever the audio application is for DaVinci Resolve. I can't remember what it is. I have a running list of all of the things that I would love to see updated in Final Cut Pro and I want to make a dedicated video that goes a little bit more in depth into what a lot of those features are. Just again to circle back, Apple has set the expectation that whenever they have an event, we are going to see something that is is probably revolutionary, but then possibly magic. Like something so amazing, we sort of didn't know we needed it and couldn't live without it once we started using it. A lot of times these events, especially as it pertains to Final Cut Pro, can be a little bit disappointing because we aren't seeing major breakthroughs in features and aspects of the application that we use on a daily basis. Obviously being able to export H.264, HEVC, ProRes videos in lightning fast times on these new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros and even on the existing M1 computers is amazing. And I can't wait to get my hands on my 14 inch MacBook Pro to really see what the difference is between my 2013 Mac Pro trash can 
and that computer went exporting, let's say, a 12-minute YouTube video in 4K. Right now, a 12-ish minute 4K video that I shot with my Canon C300 Mark II and I'm exporting it to H.264 for YouTube using the YouTube preset can take about three-ish hours to export. And to me, that is just unacceptable. With how quickly I need to turn things around for my YouTube channel, I can't be spending three hours exporting something. So I'm hoping that the 14-inch MacBook Pro can handle a lot of the exporting and reduce that time significantly. I'm still gonna be editing off my 2013 Mac Pro trash can, but once I'm done with the edit, I'm gonna transfer it to the 14-inch MacBook Pro and kick it out from there. So I'll include a link to the release notes down in the description below. Again, it's exciting to get to 10.6. I think it's one step closer, obviously, to maybe something like Final Cut Pro 11. Who knows what Apple is working on behind the scenes right now. I think it's probably gonna be a while before we get any updates from Apple unless there's a little bug or something they need to fix with the 10.6.1 version. So this is probably what we're gonna be working with for uh, the rest of 2021. And we'll have to wait till spring of 2022 to see any major new updates to Final Cut Pro. Again, check out that Ripple training video and Dylan's video over at the Final Cut Bro. And I think you'll really enjoy seeing these new features in action. As always, if you really want to support the channel, click that like button below and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Click the bell to get notifications every time I upload a video like this. And until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Yeah.